Hey all, imagine you are on a subway and it is nice and calm and it's actually not too bad. You just, it's a nice chill vibe. And then it stops and on comes a father and his three crazy wild children and they're running around, knocking into people and all of a sudden the whole atmosphere has changed. How would you feel? Today we're going to talk about perception and how your mindset and perception can actually change how you react to situations. Balancing building a successful business and being a superstar mom is hard, and yet in today's digital world, it's more common than ever. The question becomes, how do we successfully grow a business and children at the same time? Join us for a candid conversation as we share our insights into marketing and motherhood. I'm Angela Reeder. And I'm Jessie Valle. Welcome to the Marketing Moms Podcast. Okay, Angela. So imagine that situation. Subway. Yeah. Nice, calm. You're actually enjoying yourself. Everybody's just, just soothing. You're riding along. And then on come some rambunctious children and a father who just sits there and doesn't do anything about it. How would you feel? Uh, well, I would probably be a little irritated, but caveat to that, as a mom of three feral children, I'm not <laughs> sure I'm the best person to ask about that. <laughs> but I, I probably would be a little irritated. Like you, you can probably, at least, yeah. you know, on one hand, I I have been definitely been the mom that's like, I am so over it today. I don't care what you're doing as long as you're not setting something on fire. Um, but as someone who was enjoying some peace and quiet for a minute, <laughs> mm-hmm. that would definitely be irritating. Okay. And how would your perception change <clears throat> if I told you that the man's wife had just passed away an hour ago and that was the kid's mom? Mm-hmm. How would your perception definitely. of that situation change? Oh, a lot for sure. I don't think anybody could blame someone for being in shock at that point and just not even knowing what to, and you wouldn't want to, like, that's not the time you want to scold your kids for things. (laughs) Exactly. This situation actually happened to Stephen R. Covey, the author of The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, which is a book that just popped up on my, um, audio library. So I was listening to it last night and I heard this story and I was just like, whoa, (laughs) how your perception of a situation and how you react to it changes in an instant. So yeah, yeah, at first you're kind of annoyed, like it was nice and peaceful and these crazy kids come on here and the father's just sitting there not doing anything. And then you find out it's because his wife just died and he doesn't know what he's doing. He's now got three kids and they just lost their mom. And yeah, this is how they're acting out. Like, yeah. Wow. I look at the situation completely differently and how mm-hmm. I would handle it. And so it kind of brought up in me feelings of a reminder that you never know what someone's going through to begin with. Right. Because everyone has stuff. And yes, the stuff ranges in degrees of intensity and life and death situations and all these things. It varies. However, to that person, it is the most important thing that is either or probably hindering their life at that moment. Everyone has yeah. something. Yeah. And so the thing is, is we never actually, well, typically we don't know what that thing is for people, mm-hmm. especially in this day and age with social media, someone can seem absolutely fine. And then you come to find they were not fine. Yeah. Yeah, we do see that a lot, especially with social media. That actually reminds me of a story that my husband likes to tell when our oldest was little, like two, you know how two-year-olds are. Mm -hmm. She was way upset about something or other, just hysterical. And my husband said, 
she's acting like it's the worst thing in the world. And I said, it is to her. She's too. Like, this is factually the worst thing that's ever happened to her. <laughs> like, you know, when you're an adult and you watch kids react like that to things, you're like, oh my gosh, it's not even that big a deal. But like, like you said, your perception changes when you think about like, no, to them, it really is. And like, mm -hmm. how would you react if that was the worst thing in the world that ever happened to you just happened? Like, yeah. Yeah. So this, yeah. So today I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about perception and how it can be helpful, but it can also mm -hmm. be a little hurtful in life and work and relationships and all the things. So first let's start with, I don't know, should we start with helpful or hurtful? Wh wh which one do you want to get out of the way? Uh, let's do helpful. Okay. Okay. So one of the ways that it can be truly helpful is in problem solving, right? Um, when you're trying to solve a problem, sometimes a shift in perception can help you see things a little differently and see ways that you could solve the problem outside of the box, as they say, mm -hmm. that you may not have seen before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's one of the reasons that collaboration can be really helpful and important because you can get different perspectives from different people. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have one more story that I want to share from the book, but he's full of stories. Uh, we're going to link down in the show notes below just to the Amazon, whatever. Um, so you can get the seven habits of highly effective people. And well, one of the reasons I'm enjoying the audiobook is because it was read by the author, which I always enjoy things that are read by the author. But, okay, this is just, he's full of stories, but I'm just going to share one more. So they split a group of people into two groups. And they showed one side a picture of an old woman and one side a picture of a young woman. Then they showed them another picture. And the old woman group saw a picture of an old woman and the young, like the young woman group saw a picture of a young woman. Then they came together. They found out that they were actually looking at the same picture, but because they had been, everyone's seen those, right? Where you look sure, at it one yeah. way and you see one thing yep. and you look at it another way, you see another, you see a different thing. But because they were conditioned, one group was conditioned to see an old woman, they saw the old mm -hmm. woman. And one group yep. was conditioned to see the young woman, and they saw the young woman. And so when they came together and they were trying to get the other side to see their viewpoint, yeah. it was it, it was a little chaotic. Right. Right. So, of course, there were different – there's more to the story and there were different situations. Um but when you open yourself up to seeing something from a different perspective, you might be like, oh, I see the young woman now. Or, oh, I see the old woman now. I right. see both. I see both. And, and that's kind of how it helps with problem solving. Like you see your way and you think your way is right. And someone else might see their way and they think their way is right. And it's hard to get each other to see each other's different perspective but sometimes if you just open yourself up, then maybe yeah. you can collaboratively come together to create a third solution that everyone feels good about. And it's kind of hard in this day and age because we're very much a society where we want to be right. Yes. And we want to be in charge. Yep. And so to come together collaboratively to release your solution it's really mm -hmm. hard. Yeah, it is. It's really difficult. And especially, I think we see this in marketing a lot because the whole point of a lot of the marketing is that like my way is the right way and the best mm -hmm. way. And so you get, I think because you get into that rut with marketing with the like, this is how you sell your thing is you tell everybody your way is the only way that can kind of bleed over into other areas mm -hmm. where it makes it really hard interacting with people to see other points of view and to be open to other ideas. Yeah. 
I mean, an instant thing that pops in my head is, let's say, let's say there's a bunch of dishes on the counter. Problem. There are dishes on the counter. And we have company coming over in 10 minutes. What do you do? How you respond to that situation is probably going to be different than the way your spouse (laughs) would respond to that situation. One of you might decide to actually do the dishes. So now they're clean. Yeah. One of you might decide to hide them in the dishwasher. Right. One of you might <laughs> one of you might decide to toss them in the oven to hide them. I'm not going to lie that was definitely a thought that crossed my head. <laughs> <laughs> and one of you or put him, might put them in the the bathtub and pull the curtain. Oh, that's even better. Or one of you might decide to just stack them neatly. I mean, they're still mm-hmm. dirty, but it's kind of like stack them and organize them neatly right. in the sink or in that area to be washed later. And so right there, we just listed several different options. And so the chance of you and your spouse selecting the same one in your mind is probably not good. <laughs> the chances are not good. Not, and, not stellar. Right. So sometimes it's also about being able to be like, okay, has the problem been solved? It's not solved the way I would have solved it. However, it is still solved. Okay, let's move on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so just problem solving perception is huge. That's probably the biggest one in my opinion, which is why I didn't mind spending a lot of time talking about it. But uh, another thing would be relationship building. So adjusting how you perceive others can improve those interpersonal dynamics. Yes. I was actually just talking with my oldest about something like this the other day um, because we were talking about somebody disagreeing about something. And I said, you know, my dad used to tell me all the time, the person on the other side of the argument believes what they are saying just as fiercely as you believe what you are saying and unless you can keep that in mind you're not going to have a productive discussion Mm -hmm. like when all you have in your mind is I'm right clearly (laughs) I am the one that knows what's going on I am the smart person in this discussion and they don't know what they're talking about you're not going to get anywhere But if you can remember, like, no, they, for whatever reason, and like you said, we don't always know what's going on with people, like whatever reason, their life experience, their opinions, they are absolutely as dead set on their side as you are on yours. And it's important to keep that in mind because that's the only way to be productive (laughs) in a relationship. I also think about the relationship that I had with my students when I was teaching, um, sometimes the most difficult students are the ones that need love the most. And so I would try to step back and see it from a different perspective of like, if this kid goes home and does not get their love tank is not filled. Mm -hmm. Yeah could cause them to lash out at school. Yeah. And so I would give them a little bit more grace than just thinking the kid's a bad apple. Yeah. Yeah. I ran into that a lot in my daycare too. And especially because with like daycare kids, they're usually in daycare because mom or dad work. And so they're not necessarily getting as much time with their parents as kids that stay at home. Um, The flip side of that, as a, kindergarten teacher I could definitely tell which kids went to daycare and which kids were home all the time (laughs) (laughs) Fair enough. but yeah it's you know so it's it is that you know you do see that a lot where the kids that are the most frustrating sometimes are the ones that need the most because they have so much going on Mm -hmm. yep All right. Another thing is 
risk assessment, right? You see, you can, by changing your perception, you see the risk as an opportunity Mm -hmm. that could have a positive change rather than a risk not worth taking. Right. So it's just about, yeah, your mindset and just changing that perception. Well, Mm -hmm. okay. So let me just, I just made a snafu there. Um, The difference between mindset and perception is mindset is typically yourself about Mm -hmm. you and your personality, whereas perception is about outward things. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. But you would typically need to change your mindset if you're going to take a risk. (laughs) Well, and it's true too, depending on your perception, one person might see Two people might look at the same situation and one person might see, oh, that's too big a risk. I'm not willing to do that. And another person might say, oh, this is exactly the opportunity I've been looking for. Mm-hmm. And it just depends on where they're at in their lives, what they have going on, what they feel like they would be risking, that perception of the situation. And their perception of their abilities to succeed at that opportunity. Yeah. Which then again, plays into mindset and believing in yourself and your abilities. Yeah. All right. Another one would be that changing perception can help build resilience, right? So it's the reframing your failures as learning experiences and, and, you know, using your failure as an opportunity to grow can build resilience. And that is so hard. And I've tried to teach that to my kids to say, listen, sometimes it's better to make a mistake because then you can remember the solution better than if you had just gotten it right the first time. A hundred ways not to make a light bulb. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's really hard when you're getting a grade Yeah, and you want to get a hundred percent. Even though an 85 might be best for you and your growth yeah. in the subject, it's it's actually one of the things that made teaching very difficult was how to allow students to fail mm-hmm. in order to learn. Yes. But then still marking them to be able to pass the class type thing. Right. It, it's very yeah. difficult when you – that's why having – Big projects and rubrics of different pieces is sometimes better yeah. than just answer these questions. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Then what about your emotional health? Right. So yeah. if depending on how you perceive a situation and perceive the stressors in your life, it can either increase or decrease your anxiety. Yes. So again, you're sitting on the subway, you're getting a little peeved, irritated, your anxiety level's going up. It might go down significantly when you change your perception to these kids just lost their mom an hour ago. Yeah. My anxiety has just gone down. Yeah. Yep. That's definitely giving people grace and seeing that remembering that your perspective isn't the only perspective Mm -hmm. (laughs) and your experience isn't the only experience can definitely make a big difference in the way you approach things and your emotional health. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's take the other side of the coin and let's see how changes in perception can be a little hurtful to a situation. Starting with overconfidence. (laughs) Oh, yeah. You are almost too confident (sighs) and too positive in your abilities. And you take the risky decision that you probably should not have taken. And Mm -hmm. it could be helpful. Yeah. Well, this kind of plays into some of that relationship building, too. Like, if you are too sure that your perspective is the correct perspective, then you're likely to be very overconfident and kind of override and run roughshod over everyone else. 
And it, yeah, what if you rough shot the wrong person? What if it's your boss and you get fired? Mm-hmm. Like, yep. I mean, I know most of us run our own businesses, but <laughs> but still, just work with me here. Um, okay, so also it could go the other way: complacency. You mm-hmm. perceive things are just fine. And then yep. you don't grow and you don't change and you don't become a better person and you just sit in okayness. Yeah. To be honest, this is sometimes a struggle for me and my husband because I push to be better, do better, more, and he's just okay with the situation. And that yeah. <laughs> creates a little bit of a clash in our marriage sometimes because I'm just yes. like – He's like, things are fine. I'm like, I know, but even if it's as simple as, look how this space is organized. It's fine. Yeah. No, but what if I added this and we did this and we did this? Yeah. <laughs> like, it doesn't have to be a big thing in your life, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm always looking to try to make something better and tweak it so it's more effective and efficient. And he's just like, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, but that complacency could hurt him occasionally yeah. in certain ways. But my mm-hmm. overconfidence and wanting to go the other direction can hurt me as well. So yes, sometimes <laughs> coming together again could be more beneficial for yep. both parties. Okay. Number three would be a social disconnect. So... If you change your perceptions too quickly or too radically, you can alienate your friends Mm -hmm. or the people around you. It's like you believe one thing one day and you have a group of people who believe, have similar beliefs as you. And then the next day you change and you've completely alienated everyone around you. Yeah. I mean, it could be as simple as, I don't know, I'm trying to think of, uh, okay, let's say you are a vegetarian Mm -hmm. and you have a group of other vegetarians and then all of a sudden you change and you're like, I'm just kidding. I'm not just a meat eater. I won't eat any plants. (laughs) Right. Yeah. It's a huge (laughs) radical change. Um, and it could alienate the people around you who, yeah. you know, clearly have a different belief. There's a lot of random examples we could have for that. There are so <laughs> I'm many thinking examples. about parenting styles. Yes. And <laughs> I would say it's so many examples and so many hot buttons that I don't want to. I know. I don't really want to. <laughs> I was trying to find some something a little more safe. <laughs> Although. How you eat is a very big hot button for a lot of people. Too. So I apologize if I pressed your hot button. I was just trying to come up with a <laughs> an example here, but um, yeah, yeah, that is, <laughs> and and that's why your perception can be hurtful. Mm-hmm. Is because yeah. you believe so strongly and radically about what you perceive. Yeah. That you forget to perceive things the way that others perceive, which comes up a lot in politics. Yes. Which yeah. I, it was one of the reasons I stay which, far away from politics, but yeah. Angela's my politics. I do. I love connection. That. But that does go back <laughs> to what we were talking about earlier with the relationship building and understanding that your perception mm-hmm. is not the only one and that they are just as strongly opinionated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As Mm -hmm. you are and needing to do that for a productive discussion. And I think with, with that social disconnect is where you get the like refusal to see another perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay. So instead of making radical changes, let's go the opposite direction and look at decision paralysis. You are constantly altering your viewpoint and you can't make a decision to save your life. Yes. (laughs) 
Yes. Um, I mean, and, and this, again, could be big things in your life or it could be something small, like choosing the right dress for the wedding, right? Yeah. Like, but if I wear this one, I could be too cold. And, oh, but this one, this one isn't as fancy. Or what did it? Like, and you just too going, dressy. Like, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> just took a bit of it. <laughs> yes. I don't want to be overdressed or underdressed or. <laughs> yeah. And so you're was... constantly altering that viewpoint. <laughs> and yes. so your perception of the situation of how will other others perceive me? How mm-hmm. will I perceive myself? How will yeah. this uh, affect, like, the how will the weather affect this? Yes. Is it, you know, all these things leading to this decision paralysis is mm-hmm. hurtful in your overall life. I was <laughs> just thinking up too about much of your time earlier. And just for clarification, we're recording this on Halloween. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So I was taking my oldest to school and she was very excited because they were letting kids, her high school is letting them dress up in costume mm. for Halloween. And as we were pulling up to the school, I was like, I don't think if that had been me, I would have absolutely had decision paralysis because I would have wanted to dress up, but I would have been worried that nobody else was going to dress up. But then I would be also worried that if I didn't dress up, everybody else was going to dress up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I would have been stuck, like flat stuck. Um, and to her credit, she did dress up and we pulled up and kind of looked in the doors and there were not a lot of people dressed. Like it was mostly just kids in normal clothes. And she was like, mm, it does not look like anyone else dressed up. And she was like, uh. and I said, do you want me to take you home so you can change? And she said, no somebody else will be dressed up I'm not gonna be the only one and she went in which was so much better than I would have done I would have been like yes please take me home I'm gonna go get changed (laughs) but yeah so I was actually just thinking about that decision paralysis this morning because I was like I absolutely at her age would have had decision paralysis over what to do about that and like how to handle Like, what if this and what if that? And I don't, what if people think I'm weird because I dressed up? And what if nobody else dresses up? And what if everybody else dresses up and I'm the weird kid that didn't? It also makes me realize that we as parents need to help our children with their perceptions of the world as well. Yes. (laughs) Or at least being open to their perceptions of the world. (laughs) Yes, for sure. Oh, man. Yeah, that that would be pretty, pretty tough. That would have been so stressful for me. Mm -hmm. She handled it like a champ, though. Yeah. She is wise beyond her years. Yes. (laughs) Okay. And last but not least, um, your change in your or your perception can be hurtful when you miss red flags. Yes. So you have this overly optimistic perception that could make you miss the warning signs. Hence, mm-hmm. the honeymoon phase. The honeymoon phase. Where you just started dating someone and you think everything is wonderful and there is nothing wrong with this person and you can't wait to spend the rest of your life with that person and you miss all the red flags. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. Let's hope this happens to you as an, an inexperienced teenager. <laughs> yes. Well, and I think we see this too with like business opportunities mm-hmm. and clients and I was customers just gonna say that, where yeah. we get so excited and it's amazing and we don't really see any of the what's coming down the tracks at us. Yeah. I mean, and I, I know a- we talked about red flags with clients in one of our have. episodes and how yes. long like how sometimes even when you get to that point that you see the red flag, <laughs> you still just keep going. <laughs> like that one time someone said, Jesse, remember who pays you. Oh, yeah. Huge yeah. red flag. How could I yes. let anyone talk to me like that? And I still yes. worked with them. I was my own business owner. Who cares that she was a client paying me? She doesn't own me. I cannot believe I still worked with that woman for another couple weeks after that. I'm over Uh, it, guys. That was like seven years ago. But still, (laughs) it stings. Still, yes. How did I I get to the point where I missed so many red flags because I I was so excited to get paid in the beginning? Well, and I think another way that 
perception can have you miss red flags is if you aren't willing to look at things from other people's perspective and to take like advice and things from other people, then you don't know what to look for. Like one of the reasons that I see red flags sometimes is because I tell Jesse about a client and she goes, don't you think that's a red flag? <laughs> don't you, <laughs> don't you maybe think that's not ideal? <laughs> But I am so busy stuck in my perception of, oh, I got a new client or mm -hmm. I get to try a new thing that I don't see that from, you know, maybe a different perspective. <laughs> yeah. And I think we've talked about that before with, for example, clients who aren't willing to open up to give you what you need to complete a job, which for us techies is very important. I know it's right. scary to give us your passwords or give us access mm -hmm. to things like your bank account, not your bank account, but like even your Stripe account yeah. that it's scary to give someone like us access to that. Yeah. But them completely shutting down and saying, no, I'm not giving you that isn't the red flag. The red flag is when they won't even sit down to help you with it. Right. Okay. How do you want me to connect it if you're not going to give me what I need? <laughs> Although I do have to say one of my favorite things to tell, I have one of my favorite things my teenagers think that I have ever said is that I have had so many people flat refuse to give me the password to their website and then turn around and ask if they can give me their bank information so that I can connect it to Stripe. <laughs> I don't understand it, but like so many more people than you would expect <laughs> are more protective than that. of their website, have more protective of their password. And I don't know if it's because we as a society have made a big deal about not giving people your password, mm -hmm. like. Or what? Which but it's is fine. That's remarkable. why there are programs yes, that please. exist. Careful. Yeah. But it's just remarkable how many people will be like, no, I'm not comfortable giving you the password and then turn around and be like, can I just give you my bank account information? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. But again, perspective. perspective. Bank account information more important than passwords. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So also just tossing out there, I have worked with people who are more guarded because of their past. They were yes. burned by other mm -hmm. people in the past. And so well. they are wary to work with you, even if you mm -hmm. are trustworthy. And so it's that perception mm -hmm. of, okay, they've been burned. Let me tread lightly versus yeah. you're just and being that, unreasonable. Give me the password. Yeah. <laughs> and that goes back to your original story with the man on the subway. When you're dealing with someone and it feels like they're just being stubborn and won't give me what I need to get this done, it's not necessarily that. It could be that they've been burned in the past or that they've had money stolen from them or you know their website messed with um, or held hostage um, for things, which I've had clients had happen to them. And knowing that perspective that they're coming from can make a big difference in how you approach and deal with clients and customers. Mm -hmm. Because the same is true with customers too. Like you may have someone that 30 seconds after they buy a digital product is in your inbox demanding to know where it is. Yeah. And you're like, give it a minute. It takes a minute for everything to process for goodness sakes. But you know, you don't know, maybe they have bought things in the past and just gotten scammed and now they're just really wary of that and really that's mm -hmm. a big kind of hot button for them mm -hmm. so and understanding that or at least keeping that in mind that that's a possibility when dealing with people can change the way that you handle customer service and things like that yeah so our homework <laughs> our challenge to you this okay. week is the next time you are starting to feel a little frustrated about any situation, pause for a moment and try to see things from a different perspective, whether it's just by yourself and trying to analyze a potential opportunity or risk, or whether it's working with your two-year-old who is throwing a tantrum over the crust not being cut off the sandwich. 
some people have had issues. I'm just saying. <laughs> Um, <laughs> a little bit. I've never, never seen anything like that. I totally Some just made that. People have ten-year-olds that still have problems with the crest. Stop and think about their perspective. <laughs> just saying. All right. And as always, if you would love to continue the conversation, be sure to join us over in our membership at marketingmomsmonthly.com where you can get a free 30 days to hang out with us. We have a private chat where you can access us at all hours and definitely get our eyes on your business and your issues and having an outlet to talk to people. So, and let's not forget our extra special, generally over two hour podcast episode each month. Yes. Um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> with, with lots of extra feelings if you love our point of view yes so we can't wait to see you there and continue the conversation until next week bye thank you for joining us today we're so honored this is where you chose to spend your time if this episode helped you in some way please share it with another mom who needs to hear it we're in this together and if you're ready for next steps free goodies and more head over to marketingmomspodcast.com we'll see you next week